Hey everybody, and welcome back to Farm Boys Garage. If you follow this channel for long, you know I've had some issues with my air compressor. You know the title of this video is uh, converting over to a two-stage air compressor. So my air compressor is an Ingersoll Rand SS4. I had a blue head gasket on it. It doesn't act right. It still it still pumps up air fine, but I'm really just afraid to use it for sandblasting or stuff like that. I don't think it would hold up. So instead of going out and spending sixteen to $1,800 for a new two-stage air compressor, I've elected to just buy a, another compressor to stick on this one. And I'll show you this one in case you hadn't seen it before. All right, so this is the SS4. It's got this little two-cylinder single stage with five horsepower motor. Now if you're converting over yours from a single to double uh, two stage, five horsepower is about the minimum for for a two stage compressor. So make sure you do have a five horsepower motor. Also you want to check the capacity of your tank. Over here on mine, the certification plate, the maximum it's certified for is 150 pounds. So we don't want to exceed 150. So I'm on a, even though I, I bought a new switch and everything, I'm gonna leave this switch just the way it is because um, this switch is already set up for 120 pounds. And the switch I bought is a little different. Uh, it's got a little different setup. It's got a bunch of ports on the side of it. And then the uh, impulse line port comes in the top well this one comes in the bottom right here so I'd have to replumb all that so something to think about when you're about when you're upgrading yeah this one also has two safeties on it got one here and one up in here those are rated for a certain PSI so if you was going to increase to 175 pounds you would need to get two 175 pound safeties. Now what I've elected to get from Amazon, I bought it through Amazon, although I could have bought it straight from Northern Hydraulics. I liked Amazon's uh, easy free shipping. Is this North Star. This is a 14.9 uh, CFM at 90 PSI, 175 PSI max. Requires a five horsepower electric or a nine horsepower gas and it uses a single A groove belt. It does have a half inch female MPT outlet. Alright, so I've already bled the pressure out and when I bled the pressure out earlier uh, I noticed that after about when it got down about 60 pounds it just quit hardly blowing out this bottom. So I think I've got some trash in the bottom of this tank. So I end up blowing it out the manifold the rest of the way. So I definitely want, once I get everything kind of off this compressor, I want to lay it down and see if I can uh, clean out the bottom a little bit, I think. It did blow out. It blowed out pretty good to start with, blowing out a bunch of water. So let me get this thing turned around, and we'll go ahead and disconnect the, uh, the pipe right here. And everything and get this uh, pump loosened up and get it off and hopefully we'll be ready to set the other one on. So I've got the uh, the cover off and I've got all the bolts out of this shield except for one right here at the top. It's a little different. This bracket up here bolts to the compressor so there's a good chance uh, unless I rig up a bracket that I won't be able to use this uh, shield here. Guard, whatever you call it. This thing should just slide right off. You got a little hole there you got to go through to get it off. And the good news is this is, uh, I believe, the, the right belt. And it's still in pretty good shape. So as long as it's long enough, the pulley ain't, as long as the pulley's the right size, uh, we should be good. This is a lot bigger pulley than I was expecting to see, but 
I'm not sure what all this is, but uh, uh, it looks heavy duty. So <clears throat> now we need to uh, loosen up the motor and slide it a little bit. We can get the uh, belt off and then we'll take this pipe loose right here, unbolt the compressor and set it off. And then we'll be ready to set the new compressor on here. And we'll see at that point in time whether we're gonna have some fitment issues. I do notice that there, there are more holes drilled in the top of this plate, but they're offset from the ones that this is drilled to. So the chances are we may have to, to drill new holes in this top plate to be able to properly mount this compressor. I uh, won't know until we actually get it up here and see what it looks like. All right, everybody, so I've got the uh, Old compressor off, here is our new compressor, and as you can see, uh, this pipe is not going to work. The outlet's actually way up here on this top cylinder. Uh, well, actually, the outlet's here. I'm not sure what. Maybe the outlet, maybe it all ties them together. Here's an outlet right here. All right, everybody, it is day two. And I found out some stuff about this pump that I didn't know yesterday when I was filming, so I'm going to cover that right quick. Uh, this, I never even looked at the owner's manual on this pump. This is one that came with it. And you notice it's a, a bead point four. Well, what I did, I got online and went to uh, North, uh, Northern Tool, and they got a B.6 owner's manual, and I printed that off. It's a good bit thicker. Of course, I've got it single printed. I don't know if this one's double printed. Yeah, this one's double printed, but the print ain't as ain't as good quality on this one. You can tell it's just been Xeroxed. So, a couple things to think about here. Number one, this thing only has two filters on it. And they're going to go here and here on these low pressure cylinders. The low pressure cylinder comes over and goes into this intercooler which supplies air to the high pressure cylinder and this is the outlet going to the tank. So this is a plug and this is what I thought it was, you can kind of see the hex in there. So that plug's supposed to be there and then this is the intercooler safety relief that has to be there to protect the two low pressure cylinders from over pressurizing. So, Another thing is, looking at the shaft, this pump spins counterclockwise. And I'm going to mount it up here, so the pump needs to spin counterclockwise. That means this motor has to spin counterclockwise. 3450 RPM motor, 5 horse. Made in Mexico. I do not see... Is clockwise or counterclockwise? So we're gonna have to plug it in and see which way it's going. Uh, this motor is still it is still connected, it's just a little bit loose. And I need to turn that off. back around. Uh. Y'all get a better view of it. We're just gonna kick it on and kick it off. Right, this motor is turning counterclockwise. Y'all see that? Alright, next thing we need to do is figure out what our pump RPM is going to be with the motor we have. This is the formula we're going to use, motor diameter, uh, pulley diameter times motor RPM divided by pump flywheel diameter. And I already know that the motor RPM is 3450, I seen that earlier. And by specs, the pump flywheel diameter is 12 and a half inches. So all we need to do is find out our pulley diameter for the motor and we can figure out the pump RPM, our max RPM by spec is 1242 so 
we don't want to exceed that and if we do we're going to have to adjust the pulley diameter on the motor so let me go grab that all right so we've got this little uh locking piece right here it's going to be kind of in our way but we're going we can estimate it to be roughly five and a half inches it might be a little shy less than five and a half actually it may be like five and a quarter We'll, we'll go with five and a quarter, and I think that's going to be a little closer to it. All right, so five point, five point two five. And we're just going to do a little figuring here. So five point two five times thirty four fifty equals eighteen thousand one hundred eleven and a half divided by twelve point five equals fourteen forty nine. That is not going to work. All right, so we need to figure out what size pulley we need to get down to 12, below 1242. All right, so here is our formula to figure out our motor pulley diameter needed is pump RPM time pump flywheel diameter divided by engine RPM. We, I'm going to just go down to 1200. The max is 1242. So we'll get pretty close at uh, 12 and a half inches divided by 3450. And uh, that's gonna be 1200 times 12.5 is 15,000 divided by 3450 is 4.3 inches, 4.34. So if we went to 1242 times 12.5 divided by 3450. So our maximum maximum pulley at 1242 would be four and a half inches. Uh, uh, four and a quarter would be 1173. I believe that's going to be what we need a four and a quarter inch pulley. So we just got to figure out now uh, what size shaft that is take this pulley off so I'm gonna go with a four and a quarter inch pulley and that's gonna get us down to where we need to be at 